Hi, this is Dr. Daniel Amen. Sorry I wasn't on last night. Uh, I had spent uh, a large part of the evening with my mom, which uh, I did today. And she must have 10,000 pictures. Um, wow. So uh, it's mostly support and time, and she's just so strong. So I am um, blessed uh, beyond belief, but going through um, all the pictures and organizing them and finding uh, a picture of me when I was two on Santa's lap. It was so much fun. So, um, with grief and loss, um, you have to worry about depression. And so, what I want to talk about tonight is, well, how do you know if you're depressed? We asked for questions today from our audience, and that was one of the questions. I just don't feel like doing anything. Am I depressed? And then thinking, you know, about losing my dad, the stress of the pandemic, and, uh, and I don't feel depressed. I feel sad. Um, but, but there's a difference between normal loss and clinical depression. And I'm sort of not a fan of the diagnosis of depression because depression's a symptom. And it has so many different causes. I mean, cardiologists don't give you a diagnosis of chest pain. I mean, there's actually a diagnostic code for chest pain. That's not a diagnosis. It's a symptom that has a gazillion different causes. And you want to know what's causing it. And so through our brain imaging work, I talk about, well, there are at least seven types of anxiety and depression. And I tend to lump them together, anxiety and depression. Why? They go together, like 75% of the time. But how do you know if you're beginning to slip into this dark place we call depression? And then what are some of the potential causes and treatments. Another question is, well, what antidepressants do you like? Um, and that question was for someone getting off steroids. And my question is, why are they on steroids? And could the underlying inflammation actually be a cause of depression, which we know that it is. So let me talk about some of the hallmark symptoms of depression. So one, you feel sad and you feel blue, you feel negative, and you just want to cry. So it's this sort of crushing negativity that you feel, and you just can't shake it. Everybody has times when they feel depressed, but from a diagnostic standpoint, you can't shake it. It lasts for weeks. Um, so that's number one. Number two, you have decreased interest in things you usually like to do. So it can be work, it can be your hobbies, it can be other people, it can be sex, it can be whatever is typically nice, fun, awesome, you just don't feel it. 
It's just I don't care. I get no joy out of doing the things I usually like to do. So that's number two. Um, it's actually a term for it called anhedonia. Um, so hedonism. It's like, whoa, having a great time. And is like, there's none of it going on. Um, <coughs> three, you experience significant changes in your weight or your appetite. Now, classically with depression, people tend to stop eating and they lose weight. Now, if that's you, and you've never been depressed and now you're 50, somebody should do a CT scan of your abdomen. Because one of the common presenting symptoms of pancreatic cancer, especially in men, is depression. And so you always want to go, why? I mean, in a pandemic, it's like stack stress or stacking. Right, you might have lost your job, you're struggling with money, your business, maybe suffering as so many businesses are. Um, and that chronic stress actually damages a part of your brain that can be fixed, but damages an area called the hippocampus that is involved in memory and mood. And I remember 15 years ago when I went through a period of grief and I didn't quite have the skill I have now. I lost somebody really important to me. Is I got sad and I couldn't remember anything. It was so irritating, like words would just go. So classically, you lose your appetite and you start losing weight. There's sort of a winter depression where you get hungry and you put on weight. And those are different forms, if you will. And for winter blues, I am a huge fan of bright light therapy. I am a huge fan. In fact, I wasn't planning on this, but to light my set, I actually, have a brain MD light box. I created this light box. And if you sit in front of it, now don't stare at it, but just have it off to the side, for 30 minutes a day, it's been shown to support your mood, your focus, your energy, and it helps to reset your sleep, which I'll talk about. And it has both white and blue light, because some people the white light irritates. Blue light's been found in some studies to be just as effective and uh, it can help in the winter or spring, fall and summer because people are not outside. So right, COVID-19, shelter in place, isolate, but you need light. Uh, so light is really important. So anyways, for winter depressions, you're more likely to put on weight for sort of the classic kind of depression. A lot of times people lose weight. So changes in appetite, if you have no appetite at all, or it's like, this is really... Now, remember, it's not these things in isolation. They stack. You're sad, um, you're negative, you're filled with what I call ants, the automatic negative thoughts. Um, so sad mood, you lose interest in things that are usually fun, a change in weight or appetite, and then you begin to think about dying and you begin to have recurrent thoughts of death or suicide. And now, Having the thought you want to die, that's not unusual. There was one study in Seattle, 55% of the population had the thought of killing themselves at some point in life. So hear me clearly, just because you have a thought 
has nothing to do with whether or not you want to do it or it's true. I have so many patients. They go, oh, I, have, I, feel, I hate myself. I had the thought today of running someone off the road. And it's like, yeah, I've had that thought. I mean, I never do it, right? That's why you have frontal lobes to protect you just because you have a thought. There, Jerry Seinfeld once said, the brain is a sneaky organ. We all have weird, crazy, stupid, sexual, violent thoughts that no one should ever hear. So you don't have to share. Just because you have a thought, don't share unless it's appropriate to share. Now, if you have a thought of dying or you have a thought of killing yourself and you begin to develop a plan, you need to share that so that people can protect you because that is one of the hallmark symptoms of depression. But often there's trouble in the left temporal lobe, a part of the brain I've seen involved in violence, either toward yourself, suicide, or toward someone else. Now, it's more complicated than just that, but when I see damage to the left temporal lobe, I become much more protective of people. Um, now, whenever I have a suicidal patient, and I've treated thousands of them over the years, one of the first things I always tell them, suicide, is a permanent solution to a temporary feeling. Because almost all of my suicidal patients, as they get better, those thoughts go away. Um, permanent solution to a temporary feeling. If you kill yourself, it damages other people. Let's be clear, because when people get depressed, it's like their brain gets in a tunnel and there's no windows and no doors, and all they're thinking about is them. And they think, well, everyone else would be better off without me, but if you have children, if you kill yourself, you've just increased your, the risk of your children killing themselves like 500%. And I've treated many children of parents who killed themselves. And it's devastating. Um, and for some reason, this just follows me. Um, I, for my dad's uh, memorial, my son is here, who's 43. And it's hard to believe I have a 43-year-old son. Um, but I adopted him, so it's obviously I can't be that old. Um, <laughs> when he was nine, his biological father killed himself. Um, and then my son-in-law, um, his father killed himself. And then someone else very close to me, uh, when he was 12, his mother killed herself and he found her. So I get the devastation that this brings on people. And it's like, oh, you're so bad because you make people feel guilty. Um, yeah, see, some guilt works. Some guilt is good. And I don't think I've ever had a patient who I was really that clear with that later went on to kill themselves. So let us just be clear, it's not just about you. Um, and when you get depressed, it often becomes just about you because you don't have energy to think about other people. So let me just plant that idea in your head. So that's four, five. Your sleep starts to get messed up. Either you're sleeping all the time, that often goes with the winter blues, depression, or you can't sleep. Now, the classic pattern for sleep with depression is you go to sleep okay, two o'clock in the morning you're up and you can't go back to sleep. It's called early morning awakening. And great sleep hygiene is so important. We actually have a course on Amen University called Overcoming insomnia that's masterful. It's taught by uh, one of our sleep psychiatrists in our Chicago clinic, Shane Criado. Uh, sleep, you just wanna protect it. 
and smoking pot and drinking alcohol to go to sleep, they're going to wear off and then you rebound and you end up waking up. Um, sleep changes, five. Um, your energy is often low and your brain feels like it's in a fog. So low physical energy, but also often low mental energy. And then you get rocked with feelings of worthlessness, hopelessness, helplessness, or guilt. And all of us have some of these symptoms at some of the times, but if they come and they stay, then you really want to get checked out. And in the end of Mental Illness, my new book, I actually, um, there's a section in there that I'm actually very fond of. And I talk about what to do before you take medicine. And what to do is to find out why you're depressed. It's like, okay, what are potentially some of the causes? And in the book, I talk about bright minds. If you want to keep your brain healthy or rescue it if it's headed to the dark place, you have to prevent or treat the 11 major risk factors that steal your mind. And I'm not going to go into it tonight, but for example, B is for blood flow, increased blood flow improves your mood. So exercise becomes a very important uh, treatment strategy. Head to head against antidepressants. Exercise has been shown to be equally effective in a number of studies. Um, the I in Bright Minds is inflammation, which we know is a risk factor for mortality with COVID-19. And so omega-3 fatty acids are anti-inflammatory. Flossing, taking really good care of your gums, helps decrease inflammation. Probiotics can be helpful and colorful fruits and vegetables. I have a cup of frozen blueberries every day. I love it and it loves me back. Um, and tonight for dinner with my mom, um, she's so stinking cute. I love her so much. Um, she taught me how just like we had a salad. She said, what do you want for dinner? I'm like, well, let's have a salad and a little protein. And so she boiled some eggs and made a salad, sent my son off to get the lettuce and the cucumbers. And then she goes, I'm gonna teach you how to roast vegetables. Do you know what she did? She's so stinking cute. In a bag, we put the uh, broccoli and cauliflower, um, carrots. She just poured some olive oil in the bag, shook the bag, salt and pepper, put it on um, a roasting pan, uh, 30 minutes at 400 degrees, tasted awesome. And it was loaded with nutrients and my mother's love. So I'm just a happy boy tonight. All right, um, anti-inflammatory, colorful fruits and vegetables, omega-3 fatty acids, probiotics, and stop the processed foods. I mean, if you love yourself, eat food that loves you back. Um, the G is genetics. If you have depression in your family, you want to do the right things for your brain all the time. H is head trauma. Avoid it because head trauma is a major trigger for depression. T is toxins. That's why I'm not a fan of alcohol uh, or marijuana because both of them are toxic to brain function. Um, I is immunity, low vitamin D levels go with depression. Oh, they also go with death from COVID-19. Low hormones, classic. You have problems, you have these symptoms of depression that I'm talking about, check your thyroid. Check your testosterone 
levels. Low testosterone, another risk for mortality for COVID from Kurdistan. How cool is that? Um, Diabesity, high blood sugar, damages your brain. Being overweight increases inflammation, steals your hormones, stores toxins, and decreases blood flow to the brain. So this is so important. So know your risk. All right, final thing, what to do before medicine. And in my writing, and if you go, well, what supplements might be helpful for me? Um, go take our brain health assessment, go to brainhealthassessment.com. And you actually know which of your types and based on your brain type, I'll tell you what supplements I think of. Um, so attack each of the bright minds risk factors. Check for and correct low thyroid or low testosterone. Work with a nutritionally informed physician to optimize folate, B12, vitamin D, homocysteine, and other nutrients. Check your omega-3 fatty acid level. You can do that at Quest or LabCorp and optimize it. So I give all of my patients about three grams of omega-3 fatty acid. It's been found to be helpful to support your mood. Eliminate processed foods as well as artificial dyes, preservatives, and sweeteners. Um, try an elimination diet. Just see, is it gluten? Is it corn? Is it soy? Is it dairy? Is it MSG? I have cases where all of those things have contributed to depression. Um, eliminate the ants. So listen to me. Head to head against antidepressants. Exercise, equally effective. Omega-3 fatty acids, equally effective in some studies. Cognitive therapy, what I call killing the ants, um, the automatic negative thoughts. If you're depressed, you're loaded with them, becoming the master anteater and you can't do it once. It's like I can't have the salad tonight and then expect for the next five months, I'm gonna lose 20 pounds. I mean, that's like stupid, right? You have to develop mental discipline like you have physical discipline, so important. So whenever you feel sad or mad or nervous or out of control, start journaling what you're thinking. And then there are five questions. You can scroll through the videos I've done. I've talked about how to kill the ants. Uh, I should do it again though, so. All right, exercise. Walk like you're late, 45 minutes, four times a week. I have a 40 minute huddle in the morning with two of my teams. That's why I wear a Fitbit and I do the huddle on the phone. I walk the whole time and it just makes me so happy. It's like 920, I've already got nearly three miles in. So, um, and then nutraceuticals can help, especially, especially curcumins um, because they have anti-inflammatory. We talked about omega-3s. Magnesium, there's evidence for zinc, and perhaps my favorite is saffron. 21 randomized controlled trials showing it's better than placebo and as effective as things like Prozac, Zoloft, Wellbutrin, and so on. And uh, if you're taking antidepressants, please don't stop them. Just work with someone that, um, you trust. And Amen Clinics is still open. We've been open during the whole pandemic. All eight of our clinics around the country were doing telemedicine. Um, so people can still come for the scans, but uh, the doctor generally to protect you and protect them are gonna see you by video conference. They're highly trained. They're awesome human beings. I'm proud to be um, one of their leaders and uh, we would be thrilled to help you. So pick up a copy of The End of Mental Illness. If you need to see us, we would love to do that. Um, go to amenclinics.com. Um, the phone number is there. You can fill out a form. Um, we just would love to be helpful 
to you. We love the stories of transformation. And people go, so what's your success rate? Well, I know, because on my laptop, I have outcomes for 8,500 patients. And on average, our patients are complicated. They have 4.2 diagnoses, which means they have ADD, anxiety, depression, and addiction. That's a common one for us. Um, they have failed 3.3 providers and five medications. And at the end of six months, if we treat them, 84% are better. Not everybody, but for a treatment-resistant group, that's one of the best statistics published. So anyways, I hope this was helpful to you. I'm going to try to be here every night, sometimes because of what's going on in my personal life I might miss, but it's not because I don't care about you. Um, thank you for all the comments, the prayers for my family. Uh, you've been amazing. See you soon.